Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about HTTP client, how you can use HTTP client in place of application. And for demo, I'm going to use the login page that I created in my last demo to make this API call. So people who follow me on YouTube, they know that I worked on this ASP.NET Web API where I install NTD Framework Core, which talks to database. It takes username and password in HTTP post login body. And in return, it gives you user with token. It's a JWT token, which client is supposed to store. So to make this API call, I'm gonna use HTTP client. So I'm gonna inject HTTP client into login component and show you how you can use HTTP client. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna explain why using HTTP client factory is a better option. Okay, so uh, I already have this um, API running and in my Postman tool here, I'm passing email address of John Smith and password. And when I send the request, you can see that it returns token and user with it. So what we are going to do, we're going to call this API from our Blazor application. My Blazor application is running, which takes the John Smith's um, email address and password. And on login click, it's not doing anything right now. It's not making an API call. So let's write some code to make that API call. Okay, so first thing that you're going to need is uh, in your startup class, you have to mention that uh, you are um, using a singleton instance of HTTP client and will in will inject this instance in a login component. So first thing, will inject will inject HTTP client and we'll use this HTTP client instance to make API calls. Um, so validate user is the function which gets called when user clicks on uh, clicks on login and this is where we'll have to write our API calls here. Okay so I'm going to use HTTP uh, HTTP client here uh, to send async function to send uh, uh, async request and you can see that it takes HTTP request message as parameter um, which we should have to pass username and password so currently I'm gonna say null first we'll have to create that HTTP request message to pass into to pass into our send async function here Okay, so let's go ahead and create HTTP request message a new instance of HTTP request message and this HTTP request message takes four parameters it takes um, what method it is the request URI the content where you pass username and password and the content type which is going to be JSON format okay so HTTP request message the method is a new HTTP method and in our case it's going to be a post method it takes request URI which is going to be a URI of uh, URI of our web API so I'm gonna copy this copy this and paste it here um, and then it takes the content see content is going to be um, we'll have to pass string content but first we'll have to convert our user into JSON format so um, you saw that it takes username and email address and password in JSON format here so and we are taking email address and password from the user in our edit form which is mapped to this user object email address and password which is mapped to this user object so we'll have to convert this user into a JSON format to do that uh, I'm gonna use this famous uh, NuGet package uh, it's called as Newton software JSON I'm gonna install that and then go back to my login razor here and first we'll have to serialize our uh, a user object. So I'm going to say Newtonsoft JSON. Um, let's go ahead and add this into our our using statement so that we don't have to use it again and again. I'm going to say Newtonsoft JSON, and then uh, use JSON convert 
to to serialize the object to serialize the object it takes object in our case is going to be user because we want to convert uh, a user into JSON format and I'm going to take it into string because serialize object returns it returns string um, I'm going to name it as serialized user return as serialized user which will return and so the object which is mapped to our edit form will return a uh, username and password into JSON format and this is what we're going to pass into our content here in string content instead of passing empty string I'm going to pass CLS user which has username and password and the last thing HTTP um, request message takes is the header type the content type of the header um, so in our case it's going to be json format so i'm going to say new system.net uh, http headers media type header value let's put this into a next line uh, as a uh, json format so i'm going to say it takes um, application json oh. So now our HTTP request message is ready. Let's go ahead and pass that into our sync um, send async function. And I'm going to catch the response into our here. Next. Let's let's run this and see what happens. Let's see, let's step through this code and see what's happening here. Okay, so I'm gonna run it. I'm going to click on login and we have our user which is John Smith and his password and our CLI string is empty right now but when I um, CLS object it serializes the object in JSON format you can see John Smith and his email address and password and we are creating um, we are creating the message HTTP request message and we're passing the request URI, we're passing the content, which is username and password. We're mentioning uh, the content type of the request message, and eventually we are making that request. So when I make the request, I get the response back and saying that status goes 200 response reason, a reason phrase okay, and it has HTTP content, HTTP content, which I'm supposed to read back and get the token and user data of the user that user is trying to log. Okay, so we were able to make that API call. Let's try to catch the user that we just logged in. To do that, I'm gonna uh, say var response, uh, response status code, because we're gonna need the status code to check uh, if the user is valid or not. So I'm gonna say response status code. And I'm gonna get the response body, response, uh, response body, and the response body will be our uh, response dot uh, response dot content dot read as string async. So read as a uh, string async will return the response back, which will be the user which uh, who's trying to log in trying to log in so we'll uh, get the response in string format we'll get the response in json format so i would like to deserialize this json into user to do that i'm going to use um, the package that i just installed i'm going to say json convert please deserialize and here i'll have to mention which object that i want to deserialize into so i'm going to pass and if you if you see it takes uh, response body as a string so I'm gonna pass response body and catch uh, the returned returned user in my back here in my back character here okay so I have this returned user um, let's write the code if if the status code is okay then only it should get into the system. Otherwise, we should we want to show the message saying that this user is not valid. Uh, to do that, I would I wouldn't even deserialize the object. So I'm gonna say if uh, response status code uh, to string. 
um, to string equal equal to OK. OK, then I want to go into the system. I want to go into the system. Otherwise, I would like to show a message which is going to be a login message. It's going to be login message, which is going to say invalid, invalid username or password. Or password. So, and this login message is uh, is mentioned in my edit form, which is like here, uh, right uh, below my login click, so that user knows that if they enter any invalid username and password, they should see this message. Okay, um, but if I do have a valid, valid returned user, then I would like to store the token. So I'm gonna say, session store just like you stored email address please store the token too token of returned user returned user token and when user logs out just like we when user logs out mark user as log out i would like to remove that token from uh, from my session store so i'm going to say remove the token Okay, so yeah, I think uh, our uh, our code is ready. So let's uh, let's run this and see how this looks. So uh, this John Smith username and password is valid, which is saved in Chrome. When I hit on login and continue, it gets into the system. If I log out enter an invalid username and password and click on login i get invalid username and password when i give a valid username and password click on login i get into the system so this is how you can use http client to log in you know call an api to log in into the system now i would like to use i would like to do the same thing for my sign up page my sign up page so what do i do copy everything from login page and only thing to change here is login that's repeating code right that's why http client factory is better http client factory gives you options to configure your request your base address at startup class and also makes uh, also gives you a client which you can configure a user service and instead of injecting HTTP client, you can inject that service into your component and uh, and make the request. So if you instead of so in our next video, what we're we gonna do, we are going to use we're going to inject user service instead of instead of injecting HTTP client. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.